This room is much nicer than we expected. <laughs> uh, how has your day been? Everyone doing good? Yeah. Having fun? Thanks for coming to this 4 p.m. session. I know this is the perfect time to fall asleep at work. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, let's start. Um, so we're going to talk about on-device profiling and debugging with Executors today. Uh, my name is Olivia. I'm an engineer working for the PyTorch Edge team at Meta. And I'm Varun. I'm also on the PyTorch Edge team. All right, let's get started. So if you're not familiar with Executorch right now, uh, if you missed the talks, Executorch is our new on-device runtime for any PyTorch device, any PyTorch model. And as we've talked to our model developers, we know that taking models from a server use case onto Edge is hard. You run into all kinds of problems from just the basic latency, performance bottlenecks, getting the model accurate after you've made optimizations, and then squeezing that model down to fit within the constrained memory. As a result, as we've been developing Executorch, we built the Executorch developer tools, which hook into the runtime and live entirely within the Executorch repo to provide you tools to make this process easier. So we're going to present to you a few different use cases and go over how the tools we've built help solve those. First, let's take a late, uh, look at latency. Oftentimes, model developers will come to us and be like, my model takes a long time to run, and I want to speed it up. How do I know which operators to focus on first? So we have a process for generating profiling data. First, we generate what's called an ET record. Basically, this is a artifact that contains information about the graph and is able to associate different nodes of the graph from the source code all the way down to the graph at runtimes for the Executorch program, since the graph does change. So you can, in your export script or in your notebook, whenever you're lowering the model from source to Executorch, generate this artifact. Next, when you're running the model on device, we generate what's called an ET dump. This is your runtime information at an operator granularity. You can include the header here. Uh, and then when you initialize the runtime, you pass the ET dump gen there, and it'll automatically track your operator level latencies and dump that out to a file. Of course, using com a compile flag, you can choose whether or not to activate this. At the end of this, you take these two artifacts and combine them together in the inspector tool. This allows you to correlate each event and each in the execution with each operator, both in the source code graphs and the final graph that actually runs on your device. Now let's dive a little bit deeper into the inspector analysis process. Um, so you've already run the model through the profiling process and collected the debug artifacts. Uh, you can create an inspector instance from that, and you can easily access, uh, you can easily get a data frame from the inspector instance, and then you can do all kinds of data analysis uh, that you would normally run uh, on a data frame. Over here, just uh, as an example, we group it by operator types uh, and aggregate it by number of occurrences and average latency and rank that based on latency. Uh, you can see that in our model, we use a lot of convolutions uh, and the la average latency is quite high, which is usually normal for convolution uh, operator types. Um, and then you also use a number of batch norms and uh, some ads as well. So from our past experience, we know that the latency for batch norm and ads should be similar. But over here, batch norm is much higher. So that's an indication that there's a big room for improvement in latency for batch norm operators. Uh, using uh, event stack traces, you can uh, get the uh, line of code uh, in your original PyTorch uh, model implementation. So the tool has helped us pinpoint uh, this exact line of code. And from there, uh, you can potentially change the implementation and run the profiling again and see the improvement on latency. So sometimes it's more complicated to do uh, profiling. For example, when part of the graph runs on a hardware accelerator. Um, but luckily, um, exactly Torch, uh, we have enabled surfacing the up-level latency uh, up-level latency from hardware accelerators uh, for hardware such as uh, Apple Core ML, uh, Qualcomm, uh, XMPEG, et cetera. Uh, of the uh, first party uh, backends that's integrated with Executorch, we can see the per-op latency. 
another class of problem people may face is uh, numeric accuracy. Um, as an example, after quantization, my model gives output with poor accuracy. How do I explore the numeric differences to root cause the issue? Uh, top challenges for this kind of problem uh, include, most obviously, there's lost precision due to quantization. Uh, and there could also be graph changes uh, during optimization. For example, there could be uh, operator fusions, operator decompositions. Uh, and as we have mentioned, hardware acceleration may obfuscate operator costs as well. For example, over here, we are uh, fusing COUNT2D and batch norm into a COUNT-VN operator. So how do you know the output edge of uh, batch norm should match the output edge of COUNT-VN? So the two, uh, the debug tool uses uh, debug handle IDs uh, to associate operators from between graphs, uh, even when the graph changes. Uh, so with the debug handle, uh, the debug tool can reliably associate the nodes. The debugging process is very similar to the profiling process. Uh, you collect debug artifacts uh, from both the uh, when you export the model and when you run the model on device. The difference I want to highlight is um, when you collect the uh, debug artifact from uh, when you execute the model, you're passing additional parameters uh, to retrieve and store the intermediate outputs from the model. So uh, how you do it is uh, imagine you have a non-optimized model and an optimized model. You run the debug process uh, once for each, and then you get two inspector instances. You can align the inspectors uh, with the debug handles and then compare the uh, intermediate outputs. Um, there are a few um, out-of-the-box numeric metrics, for example, cosine similarity, uh, mean squared error, that we provide. But uh, since you have access to the raw tensors, you can do uh, the, you can choose the uh, numeric me metrics of your choice. Um, over here, just uh, as an example, we say cosine similarity smaller than 0 0.8. That means the outputs are not similar as we expected. So there's some discrepancy over there. Uh, as you can see, the tool has helped us uh, associate the, uh, the two output edges, the highlighted in, uh, dark, in blue. Uh, those two output edges are associated with the um, uh, debug handle number two. Uh, and um, that's how we know that um, those are the edges that are supposed to match uh, but do not. Cool. And for our last problem space, let's take a look at memory optimization. As we all know, uh, a lot of these hardware devices are very constrained on the amount of memory that you can put into them. You're not fitting like 200 gigs of VRAM onto a mobile phone. So if you need to meet a memory constraint, how do you identify where there's headroom? So one of the advantages of ExecuTorch is that we do memory planning in advance. When you generate an ExecuTorch program, you can store all the static tensors and inspect those. Further, you can generate mem uh, memory trace and since no dynamically allocated memory is done during the model execution, we can know the exact space in memory that each tensor will occupy ahead of time. So we have a uh, tool that is able to visualize the layout of the memory ahead of time. And once you run this uh, script on your program, it'll generate a Chrome trace that you can load right into the Chromium browser. Uh, and you can see that time is on this axis each time step. And then this is where the tensors would actually live in your device's memory. You can also view a uh, memory of different delegates uh, in different processes. So let's take a look at one of these uh, charts from an actual situation that we ran into where one of our tensors was taking way more memory uh, that we, uh, than we expected. We took a look at the memory trace and we noticed that, wow, these tensors are pretty big uh, and that's unexpected. So uh, when you click on each one of these tensors, you can actually view uh, the stack trace and go back to the source line of code where that memory is coming from. This enabled our engineers to notice, uh, after taking a look at the code, that the logits of this tensor were growing in O of n memory complexity. And on closer inspection, we were able to optimize that down to a constant time scaling factor. All right, hopefully uh, that gives you a good idea of the tools that are available in the ExecuTorch uh, suite. And we hope to hear from you um, what tools are missing, what do you want to see next. Go ahead and approach us. Uh, we'll be around the conference today and tomorrow. Um, but otherwise, thank you. Yeah, thank you.
Okay. So uh, we have five minutes for Q&A, so anybody have any questions? Uh, stand up, go to the microphone over there and ask your question, please. Sure. I mean... No question? Tensor RTs, uh, not, yeah, I'm not familiar with uh, Tensor RT and how it relates to ExecuTorch stuff. Is that a, uh, like a profiling tool? Uh, so we don't cover CUDA with ExecuTorch. ExecuTorch is for uh, mobile devices, so Qualcomm, yeah. Apple, uh, X and N pack primarily. Um, yeah, so the question is that how do you guarantee that uh, once you manipulate the graph, you still have debug handles for the ops? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so if you, um, say if you um, modify the graph and then it runs on specific backend, then it's in the backend, backend implementation that they um, assign the debug handles to the ops. Yeah. Um, and then, the other cases is kind of like just um, the exact torch export process will guarantee there will be. So um, we probably, some, in some cases, we don't have debug handle for all of the operators, but we have um, like points of interest in the execution. Uh, we have like the, um, some operators that has the debug handle that is like enough for um, your point of interest profiling and debugging. Like the segment anything model? Uh, I'm not sure if we've done that. Like our main focus has been uh, so far on. I think we've Do run Doesn't one of the FOAs? I think we were on SEM mode. Yeah. Mode. <laughs> yeah. It's our EM. Yeah. Sure. Please. Right. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Uh, so uh, ET dump, which is the um, uh, the uh, uh, runtime artifact um, that the runtime debug artifact that you collect, it's uh, it's probably so it's the I want to show the profiling process, which seems similar. Yeah, this one. Um, so this uh, this supports like um, multiple multiple runs. So you can collect data for multiple runs, write them in ET dump, and then later in the inspector um, analysis, uh, it will aggregate um, the latency like profiling data for multiple runs. Yeah. If you notice the uh, actual data frame here. It's kind of hard to see. Um, uh, obviously, you can't see it, but these are each percentile. So this is like the P10 performance, P50, P90. Uh, so these are uh, when they're presented to you, it's automatically aggregated. Um, and when you generate, when you set up the buffer for the ET dump here, uh, you basically set that to the number of uh, blocks, so the number of iterations you plan to run the model for. So obviously, after the fact, if you have multiple times that you've executed the model across different devices, then you could just take the data frames and compare those uh, however you want to. Uh, take a question. Oh, oh, question. oh sorry. Sorry, uh, you can <laughs> talk to us yeah. uh, on the site. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thank you, everyone.